Sunday the 16th of June, Sunday evening, and we're just going to 9 o'clock. Still, obviously, lovely and bright here. We're coming up to summer solstice the 21st of June, which will be our longest day of the year. I'm up on the hill here now. Let me jump this fence with my what I'm going to call the spooky crew. Each one of these animals has given me a hard time at some stage of their life. This black lady, black maverick, jumped out and busted my gate. Madra there, actually on the way home, went over three row of barbed wire, an electric fence and into a man's meadow. This lady, I couldn't get loaded when I had her on land that I needed to trailer her to. This fella is just a bullock and he's going to be going when he's fattened. So he's on the good ground for now. So these are all going. Um, and we have Bug up there to wrap. So uh, Madra, we all know what Madra did and we all know what Bug did. So uh, motherless May is, uh, that's a story for another day. But this lady now is actually the best of them. Uh, manners wise, she never gave me any trouble, but she's just a little bit on the traditional short horn side. She's uh, a little bit plain and she's a little bit leggy. So uh, she's just, I have her full sister below. She's grand, to be honest with you. But it's just, I have enough heifers now to be thinking about. So they're in on grass here. It's, you may say it's gone a little bit strong, but there's lovely clover. In among it all, you can see it here. Now it's kind of closing up now for the night. It's getting late and it folds up its leaves when darkness is about to arrive. So we can also see that we have our buttercups and we have our dockins and we have our weeds all very mature. And my mindset this year now has changed over the last while. Speaking to other lads that are farming this way, um, I had this thing in my head that I wanted my fields clean the whole time. Now I do still do a bit of topping, but I have decided on this bit of ground here at the back of the house that I'm not going to do any topping this year. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why I'm not going to do it. And I'm starting to move out of the way, girl. I'm starting to love the look of weeds can you believe that i'm starting to uh, admire them now if you look at this field now it looks like a weedy mess and it is a weedy mess but normally i couldn't stomach that now and i'd have to go and get my topper and start topping but we have super mature dockins here and we have even some mature rushes and we have mature buttercups they're the only weeds that i can really kind of point out uh we have thistles where's the thistles but what I've come to realize is that when I top these dockins, you can all notice now that these dockins have come to full maturity and the leaves are all rotten away and they're literally wilting away and the grass is growing right up tight to that plant. Now, if I was to come along with my topper, mow that all off, my dockins would grow back big leaves and take up a big square foot of ground where the grass will be restricted growing. So at the moment we have a tall stem that's carrying the leaves away up off the ground and the grass is allowed to grow in tight to the plant and eventually compete with that plant. So they're doing their thing, they're breaking up compacted ground so I'm not worried about them now anymore. And if you stand back there now, or if I stand back there now and look if my phone goes back into focus, I have a big dirty mess. And I'm starting to really like it. Where it used to sicken me before. And another thing now I'm noticing as well is that if I keep on cutting away all those uh, weeds, then I don't have a weed for the predator to come along. So basically we have our beetles that's laying larvae on them leaves and if you can see there they're all et away by the larvae the little uh, yellow eggs that's laid on the back of it and i'm also noticing as well the sparrows are coming along and they're picking little bugs off them leaves as well look at that leaf there completely et by its predator 
So if I have no Dockins, then I have no predators. And if I keep mowing the Dockins myself, I'll still have Dockins and I'll have no predator. So that's another reason why I'm not going to uh, top this year. Or for the next few years, all things can change again. Rushes I tend to keep an eye on all right, but the likes of these now are serving a purpose, a massive purpose. There's obviously something seriously wrong with this bit of ground here. Not seriously wrong, but it's doing its thing, so I'll allow them weeds to do their thing and eventually they'll become victims of their own success and die off. Also, I'm pushing the cattle on through here fairly quick. You can notice that there's a lot of trampled grass here. Lovely trampled grass there, and we have it also et to the clay in the likes of these places. Well, not et to the clay, but fairly et. Now, I could have left them on this for another night, but what I find that they do is they'll just continue to eat this bit down even tighter and leave that woolly stuff. Excuse me, I have to wind myself. They leave that woolly stuff uh, and just overgraze what they're already after eating. Now you can see what they've been lying down here. There's that place well battered down. So yeah, that was uh, that was my that was that's what made me make my decision to move them on in. So they're on a fairly tight place. So you could call this now high density grazing. So this will do them a half a day. I jumped away again. So they're in here and they have grasses at different stages of maturity. We have our plantain, which they love, our white clover, and our red clovers. So, yeah. <laughs> so they're definitely starting to thrive. So Madra lost her calf. Bjog refused her calf. Our bullock is getting fat. Our little red clare short turn is just not what we want. Black Maverick is the tramp, she's going. And we have lead cow's daughter. I know a lot of lads likes this one. So, but she tends to give me trouble. She's super quiet with me, but um, she doesn't like strangers at all. She has a head up in the sky. Even when the girls come in, she's liable to bust through anything and be gone. So, uh, yeah. She will be uh, for sale, and she's a nice heifer. Someone will enjoy her, or will like her. You can see, look at that tram. Isn't she desperate? That's the story with her. She's just a real bad humoured heifer, that one. Yeah. Also here now as well, we have our little hedge. You can't notice it, but I have a white horn hedge grown in there. So every three bushes of white horn, here we are there, we have a common not a common, we have, um, what do you call it? Mountain ash. So mountain ash, white horn, white horn, white horn, white horn, mountain ash. And that's going to be my hedge up along here. And then I have made a couple of more hedges that way. So small little paddocks. Just for the fun of it. Why not? And we'll work our way through them. So I'm very excited to see those uh, bits of hedge grow. Look at that lovely red clover. Red clover isn't a very popular clover. Mostly white, and I love to see the little spots of red clover grow. So these cattle now are definitely thriving mad up here. Bioga's out to get very fat. She threw that calf and she never milked a day. This lady lay down her calf and killed her calf and has never milked a day. She's dried up and now she's putting on flesh. This lady here is a two-year-old, only started to come bullying this year. She's starting to flesh up, but she'll never be mad fat. Her mother was a uh, jersey. And this boy here is the first bullock that I have at this crack. He had two bags of meat as a weanling, and he hasn't been fed anything since. And he is thriving mad now, and he'll be fit for killing, I'm hoping, by September. He's getting roundy looking. So he is really enjoying this grass here. Yeah, so that is the story with the 
spook, spooky, what do they call them? The spooky crew, yeah. <laughs> The Spooky Crew, Sunday the 16th of June, seven days out from the fair of Spansel. So, this day week, I'll be probably home again. The fairs tend to be finished fairly early in the afternoons nowadays, I found. The big nights are the nights before. If you're into that, carry on. And the fairs in are fairly quick, and people are back on the road again. So, on the 16th of June, this is my little spooky crew update. Sunday even, I will say good luck and goodbye.